What's up, y'all? For those of you guys who think or who thought that I was corny enough to set up a camera, get out of the car, then get back into the car, you know, to look organic, um, I can assure you that's not the case. I'm not that corny. What's actually going on is I have my phone uh, super clamped to the headrest of my passenger seat. That's how you get the POV angle. So I have to set it up on the other side, on the other side of the uh, car. So I have to set it up through my uh, passenger side door. So I set it up and then come around and then get into the car, which is cool because, you know, it comes across as, you know, organic or whatever. But uh, yeah, today I did it while I was getting gas. So that wasn't a setup. But anyway, uh, Amanda Seals. <clears throat> so <laughs> uh, maybe a year or two ago, I was at a YouTube event. Um, YouTube has this initiative called YouTube Black, where it tries to facilitate events to educate and give uh, black creators the opportunity to network with one another. And I was invited to an event in Atlanta and um, Amanda Seals was one of the speakers and she was being interviewed by consciously. Some of you guys may or may not be familiar with him, but he's a uh, he's another YouTuber, uh, somebody that I think is pandering to the left and, you know, to women and stuff like that. But nevertheless, he was uh, the one interviewing her. And I was sitting in the front row like I usually do whenever I attend stuff. And uh, I checked my phone and she, she called me out. She was like, that's so rude. So that, that's my in-person experience with Amanda Seals. I can't remember what I did. Maybe I laughed or something. Um, but what we're seeing with this Club Shay Shay interview, I think is interesting, right? Because I think Amanda Seals is very reflective in a lot of ways of the growing disposition amongst our women that a lot of us find problematic and that uh, I don't know if we've spent enough time discussing uh, and elucidating um, upon. So, you know, here's, here's my thoughts, right? Um, kind of like I said with the B. Taylor um uh, conversation. I think Amanda Seals and people like her, people who support her are a result of trauma. I know I've beat that like a dead horse, but I think if we can start diagnosing the cancer instead of just the um, the symptoms, I think we can prevent things like this and people like her from happening. And, you know, kind of like she mentioned in the interview, she said, you know, if I grew up with my father, I'd be different. Something along those lines. Uh, fathers... Like I've said multiple times, and even my uh, Anatomy of a Deadbeat Dad um, project, which you guys should check out, fathers are vital. <laughs> fathers are the grounding, um, you know, paternal energy, masculine energy is grounding, whereas feminine energy is more so um, up in the clouds, it's more so idealistic, you know, and when those two things are working in harmony, it's a beautiful thing. But in our community in particular, what we're seeing happen is an overindulgence in feminine energy and a downplaying of masculine energy. And I think that's how you get people like Amanda Seals. I think that's how you get um, borderline, if not narcissistic women. And, and side note about narcissism that's, that's interesting. There was, a, there was a point in time where I was like super fascinated by um, anti -per, uh, antisocial personality disorder. And I stumbled upon this thing called the, uh, the dark triad, right? And it's, it's comprised of narcissism, psychopathy slash sociopathy, and I'll explain the difference, and Machiavellianism, right? Three, three. <laughs> and uh, the differences are, you know, so narcissism, most of us, if not all of us, have a little bit of narcissistic ness to us right we we believe that uh we are the first player right in this video game that is life you know we we believe that 
you know, was it uh, all the world's a stage and all the men merely players? We believe that we're the uh, we're the protagonist, right? But we don't consider other people's stories. We only see the world through our point of view. So obviously, we see the movie through our point of view as well. Um, so we all have a little bit of narcissism. Narcissism being that you know you believe that uh, you know you're you're always right. You're the priority. Um, you your needs and your wants should supersede other people's needs and wants. Uh, now, people are narcissistic to varying degrees, and what we're seeing grow uh, in society at large, but more specifically as we talk about our women, is this growing um, sense of women's way is the right way, women's point of view is the right point of view. Um, and, you know, it's, it's even solipsism, right? Solipsism is akin to narcissism in the sense that solipsism is that I believe I am the only person who actually exists and everybody else are just NPCs in, in my video game. All right. So, um, so then, you know, you have sociopathy, um, psychopathy, obviously people have heard the term psychopath. It's thrown around fairly loosely. And we think of like most serial killers as psychopaths. Actually, apparently that's not the case. According to some research, um, only, you know, a portion of serial killers are psychopaths. Um, most of them would probably fit more closely into sociopaths, narcissists, uh, Machiavellian, uh, as opposed to psychopathy. But psychopathy being, um, I was born without the ability to feel. <laughs> without the ability to empathize with people. So, you know, the extreme version of that is I can kill indiscriminately, right? I can hurt people indiscriminately and I don't actually feel bad about it. Now, sociopathy is kind of like that, but as opposed to being born like that, you were made into that. Again, I'm not a psychologist, but based on the research I've, I've, I've done, um, this is the best way I can explain it. Any psychologist in the comments, please clarify, please correct me. But um, sociopathy is, you know, I was brought up in circumstances that were inhumane, right? And because of that, I turned myself into uh, operational psychopath to survive, to thrive, etc. cetera. We, we see this happening with cho uh, kids in the hood. We see this happening with you know, uh, you know, child soldiers, for instance, people who grew up in war zones, people who grew up in abusive environments, um, they essentially turn themselves into psychopaths. Now, what's interesting between psychopaths and sociopaths, psychopaths don't have any remorse, like they don't have the ability to have remorse. Sociopaths are stifling or, or numbing or have had to numb their ability to feel remorse. Right. Uh, I think <laughs> we can make an argument of like which one is worse. But um, and then you have the, the you know, the third piece of the dark triad, which is Machiavellianism. Now, Machiavellianism is based on a book by uh, Niccolo Machiavelli called The Prince. Right. And, and the book is all about essentially how to be a sociopath. Right. How to be a sociopath with the expressed um, with the express kind of uh, mission to seize power as a prince, right? This was written back in the day, I think, you know, 19th century, 20th century, how to seize power and how to maintain power. And one of the things you realize as you become more educated and you get older is like, you know, a lot of times very ugly things have to be done. Uh, for pretty things to happen or pretty things to maintain themselves. And this book is one of those examples. So, for example, in the book, he talks about, you know, as a prince who is looking to take control of a certain province or a certain uh, village or whatever the case may be, uh, the best way to go about doing that is to send your most vicious and your most sadistic general to that place. Um, instruct this person to rape, to pillage, to kill, to just, you know, cause havoc to secure the territory that you're trying to secure. And then, you know, 
on the day that you move in, right, on the day that you bring all your stuff and your family and, you know, the rest of your soldiers to, you know, uh, take up residence in that place, you know, to, to be sovereign over that place, the very first order of business is to execute publicly, to execute that general, right? And what's interesting about it is the whole point is the people are going to think you're their savior, right? Not knowing that you were the one who sicked the hellhound on them in the first place, right? So I bring all that up to say, I think it's interesting um, how psychology plays out in everyday life. And with the Amanda Seals, um, you know, with the DSM, or D -D 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 DDSM, I think it's called, um, there are certain traits and certain boxes you have to check off to be qualified, classified as a um, narcissist, as a sociopath, psych uh, psychopath, etc. Um, so again, you know, psychopath born, sociopath made, uh, Machiavellian learned, <laughs> right? Um, a lot of times men are diagnosed at, um, rates that are far higher than women. And I have a theory, an unqualified theory, but I think it's because, uh, women can more easily fly under the radar, literally and figuratively, than men, right? So uh, there are certain ways that women can uh, be potent in their evil or in their vindictiveness that isn't as easy to identify as men, right? Like a woman, like you, we've seen the stories where a woman will pour bleach into her husband's coffee, a little bit of bleach every day uh, for him to die so she can collect his life insurance policy. Men are more so like, you know, overt, like we'll, we'll strangle the lady or whatever the case may be. Right. So I think, I think it might actually be more 50, 50. It might actually be a balance to the male, female, psychopath, sociopath, um, ratio. And I think, <laughs> Again, unqualified diagnosis, but I do not think Amanda Seals is autistic. I think Amanda Seals is probably a clinically diagnosable narcissist. And for the people who know her personally, maybe even getting into sociopath. Because her behavior, her inconsistencies, her... Um, bombastic kind of, you know, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Self. Damn. What's the word I'm looking for? Also, while I'm thinking you guys like subscribe, these are just one takes me, me yapping. Self-righteousness is the word that I was thinking about. Um, it is dangerous. Right. And, and, you know, just for a second, I want people to just imagine if somebody like uh, Amanda Seals was a man, there wouldn't be this extra uh, allowance made for maybe she is or, you know, she just misunderstood whatever the case may be. No, he, Adam Seals, <laughs> would be a danger to society with that level of ego, with that level of self-righteousness. With that level of I'm always right, the world is my oyster. At the at, at worst, I'm the world's victim. I'm the world's punching bag. These are the types of men that women routinely complain about. These are the types of men that routinely ruin women's lives. But that embodied in a woman, people think it's uh, it's just sad. Uh, we need to create extra allowances for her. No, I think it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous. I, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a coincidence that at her age, right? I think Amanda Seals is forty. Uh, she hasn't been able to establish, sustain, maintain um, 
you know, relationships, whether with men or even it looks like with women, you know, she, she brought up uh, Issa Rae. So at a certain point, you start realizing, like, everybody can't be wrong. Right? Everybody can't be wrong. At what point do you... At what point do you turn and look at yourself and look, oh, maybe it's me. Right? Maybe it's me. So, I hope that uh, <laughs> provides, you know, some additional food for thought. Um, namely, for each of us to consider the ways that we are narcissistic, the ways that um, Amanda Seals is us, and we are Amanda Seals, and we, or the world creates Amanda Seals, and uh, rewards Amanda Seal behavior, and accommodates Amanda Seals, and also, you know, women, women, women are dangerous, <laughs> women are dangerous particularly because they are given the presumption of innocence, women are dangerous particularly because we don't think they're dangerous, right? I remember uh, some years ago they were talking about Idris Alba being the next 007. And, you know, I thought to myself, that's that's not realistic. That doesn't make sense. I know movies are, like, you know, bombastic and over the top. But, like, a black, a six-foot-three black dude uh, in high society, British society, ain't going to be able to spy on shit. Because <laughs> as soon as he walks into the building, all eyes are on him. Because we are given the presumption of guilt. You know, conversely, you know, another... what The direction I think they ended up going was the black girl that they cast as the new successor to 007. But, like, that could actually work. Right? Women are allowed, even when we look at, um, you know... During, during antebellum slavery in this country, women are allowed to fly under the radar in a way that men are not, right? And that makes women uh, potentially dangerous, right? So let's not uh, scoff at women, you know? One, one of the uh, sayings uh, in Nigeria, people say, you know, after God, fear women. <laughs> and another one is, you know, fear Fear person with no fear women, meaning that if somebody is not afraid of women, you should be afraid of them. All right. So, like I said, just some food for thought. Um, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know if you want me to keep this series going. Um, it's so much easier. It's one take. So, there are no edits. There are no cuts, as you see. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoy it. Like I said, like, share, subscribe. And I will see. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.